record. Hi, welcome to our OSEP Leadership Conference presentation on July 2021. This session is titled Learning Sprint, an approach to improvement through SEA and LEA partnership. Thank you all for being here with us today. Our objectives for this time are to share the partnership journey of the Arkansas State Department of Education, the Fort Smith School District and Spradling Elementary School in their quest to improve thinking, policy and practice impacting the least restrictive environment for students with disabilities. We'll also look to deepen thinking about how to work vertically in the system to affect change and impact outcomes for students with disabilities and discuss the benefits of using improvement science to structure change decisions in a system. For our time, the session will start with a little bit of a framing of the conversation. Then we're really gonna spend the bulk in the Arkansas story, talking about their approach and their entry into what we deem or termed a learning sprint and their commitment to improvement that is demonstrated every day through their work and especially as recognized through their participation in this process and what that looks like and manifested out in terms of impact for students, not only within Fort Smith and Spradling Elementary School, but within Arkansas as a whole. And then we'll spend a little bit of time wrapping up with improvements that can be done in every system. With us today, so I am so excited. My name is Jana Rosborough and I'm with the National Center for Systemic Improvement at West Ed. Um, and also joined by my colleague, Matt Navo. And we have the pleasure of getting to introduce to you all, and some of you may already know these folks, uh, Dr. Jeff Adams, who is the State Systemic Plan Coordinator with the Arkansas Department of Education, the Division of Elementary and Secondary Education, and Robin Dawson, who is the Principal of Spradling Elementary. And really, it will be their voices telling this story that will be it really it will be their voices telling this story that will draw you in and have you wanting to connect additionally beyond this recording today. So framing the conversation. Let's start by a term I've already used within this session, a learning sprint. So a learning sprint is a disciplined team-based effort to learn something specific in a short period of time. And that's exactly what we set up as an opportunity within the NCSI, which is the National Center for Systemic Improvements, Improving Low Performing School Systems Learning Collaborative. So we made available an offer to states teams to come and join us in a quick but deep dive into improvement science. We also recommended to states to not only bring themselves, and that's looking at more than one person from a state team, but also when possible to make some partnerships with districts and school teams. And that's exactly what Arkansas did. So they came into this learning sprint as a multi-layer of the system team, ready to dive in and do some thinking about problems that were having impact at all levels of the system. So when we talk about improvement journeys, especially through the lens of improvement science, this is a graphic we often use. So it starts with understanding the current system, and then you focus on collective efforts, and you generate ideas for change, you learn and practice, and then you figure out a way to sustain and spread those efforts. Well, learning sprint, by its name, it says it's time to find, right? So we're moving really, really quickly in order to be able to um, get an idea even for change. So you can see here with the red dots all around, right? That that's sort of where we were able to focus in the learning sprint. And as they talk through their story, really the biggest piece here is, is evidenced by that red circle around that is the understanding of your current system. So getting that opportunity to go a little bit deeper, be able to see the system that you potentially want to change is really the bulk of this story. And then you will also hear about how that understanding was able to be propelled into action at both the state and at the school and district levels. The central law of improvement 
because we would not be able to dive into this, um, right? And this is a tenant too, right? That comes through and we've heard multiple presentations, but it's absolutely a truism that every system is perfectly designed to get exactly the results that it gets. So really from this frame, we had folks come in and enter these conversations in the learning sprint and Arkansas included in that, that said there's something around what is happening in education that could be improved because right now it's not working for some of our kiddos. And so from that premise, that was the entry into this learning sprint and improvement science journey together. So here we go, the bulk of it, the Arkansas story. And the pictures that you will see throughout are from Spradling Elementary. And so we get to see some of the kiddos, right? That um, Ms. Dawson has the privilege of leading um, both and thinking through their instruction. And she has a wonderful team, which you will hear about as well there. And it is really nice always to see some kiddos throughout and uh, really ground us into what exactly we are looking for in terms of improvement. So let's start with the why and the how. So I'm gonna start this conversation and this is how this will be structured as lobbying a question to both Jeff and Robin to have their reactions and thinking and provide us a little context um, for this story. So let's start with this one. What was the impetus to engage in this learning sprint opportunity with the National Center for Systemic Improvement? And Jeff, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Jana and Matt, and to the uh, NCSI team. We uh, have had a longstanding relationship with West Ed and NCSI, and it's through that relationship that um, we learned about the learning sprint and the learning sprint process. Um, we have engaged with um, the support of NCSI because with the implementation of ESSA, and the significant shift that that brought um, in terms of the way that our state agency could really support LEAs as they approach student learning. We knew that the support that we provided at the state level needed to really evolve and shift um, with ESSA. And so as our state implemented ESSA, we were also looking at models and designs for um, ways that we could support and not appear as a strong arm, sort of compliance driven focus to our LEAs, but truly be supportive in a way that would engage um, us at the SEA level to the LEA level in a process by which we could really look at our system. And uh, Matt and Jana and Corey and the team at NCSI introduced us to this learning sprint process. Um, we, we knew that we, um, have significant gaps in Arkansas with regard to um, students receiving access to core instruction who are on IEPs. Our IEP entitled students, um, we have significant gaps that are um, similar to those around our country. And we were looking to ways to expedite, to really dig in quickly to um, some of the whys behind those despairing gaps in, in our students with disabilities as compared to um, their peers. And so we engaged in this learning sprint process to really look at improvement and our system and to really examine perceived and or real barriers to, to that process. Now, we knew about Spradling Elementary at the state level because they are driven by an innovative leader who is not afraid of change. And we knew that that team at Spradling, though they were identified under ESSA as needing additional targeted support, and they were in good company. We had over 140 schools that were identified under ESSA as needing additional targeted support for the student population or subpopulation of students with disabilities. And we knew that Spradling was already laying a strong foundation with collaboration, not only with their gen ed teachers, but with gen ed and special ed teachers. And we knew that that 
foundation for professional learning communities and, and their interest in change was very salient. And so at the State Department, we reached out to Ms. Dawson and uh, let her know about this potential opportunity to engage in a learning sprint. And she quickly jumped on that opportunity. And uh, I'll let her now explain the why that uh, she felt that Spradling needed this opportunity. So thank you, Jeff. It's so wonderful to be here today with um, all of you and our um, our learning community that's out there that are listening. Um, yes, we at Spradling, our school had been through the PLC process in a deep and immersed way. Um, we found that our kids overall were making huge strides in their academia. We were closing gaps. We were seeing all the things that you want to see as an administrator of a school. Um, Yet, our special ed population was still continuing to lag. And as we got back um, scores from each time that our students would take uh, national assessments, we were just seeing gains in our gen ed population, but yet special ed just seemed like they were continuing to lag. And we took a hard, deep look at that. And we started saying, you know, what is it about their academic environment that we have the ability to control? And what, you know, how would the State Department look at if we started doing some things different in order to affect student achievement? Well, we found out quickly, uh, Jeff, when we were just so blessed to get into this learning sprint and develop a problem of practice because what we were wanting to do is we were wanting to do something that was very different from traditional education, very different from traditional SPED. We were wanting to take those students and put them back into the gen ed classroom, um, especially if they were self-contained, which means in Arkansas that you're in the same classroom with multiple grade levels all day long. And in traditional SPED, you were um, taught, you were taught start at whatever level you were so even if you were in fourth grade but you were on a second grade level we would start teaching them at second grade and then hope to build them up only you know Jeff we found out that just never happened they never made those gains um, and it was a teacher in a, a, a teacher in a classroom one to 15 kids with an aide and all day long they would just work with these kids and they just were not seeing academic gains. So, you know, we had the thought that all kids can learn at high levels. In fact, my entire building had agreed that that was a commitment we were going to make and, and just absorb that we believe all kids can learn at high levels. And it's kind of like we did believe that except for special ed, we didn't include them in the processes that we were doing for the other kids. And so we said, hey, let's bring them out. Let's put them back in mainstream with support, with accommodations, but get them back in those gen ed classrooms because they need to hear that grade level instruction, that grade level vocabulary, those grade level standards. Um, stop trying to meet them where they are. Let's put them where they're supposed to be and see what happens. And so, um, our biggest um, problem of practice was how do we make that happen within the confines of the special ed laws and the rules and policies of the State Department. And Robin, that really quickly highlights the real and or perceived barriers that um, I alluded to right before you began talking, because um, as we think about the implementation of IDEA, so often, not only in Arkansas, we know it's prevalent here and in other places, special ed is sort of viewed as a place yeah. and instead of it being viewed as service. Right. And so one of the barriers that we saw early on through this process is just this idea of, oh, we can't change the place. And the reality is what you were trying to implement in Spradling is the, um, the special education services and provide those as the law intended in the least restrictive environment. And um, that ties so well into one of the overarching issues in our great state, 
which is around least restrictive environment. We um, in Arkansas uh, are generally about fifth or sixth from the bottom as it turns, uh, as we, as it relates to um, the other states with least restrictive environment. And so that's the problem that we chose to investigate was LRE. Absolutely. And, you know, Jeff, when we were talking at, in our learning sprint with Wested and NCIS is that, you know, we, we wanted to look at least restrictive environment in a different context than it is traditionally. You know, traditionally, especially at the elementary level, I'll just speak for myself. Um, we here in Arkansas, we looked at least restrictive environment of um, as you go up the ladder, but um, and maybe for PE or music or library time, those types of things, making sure that kids that have made it to self-contained had been placed in self-contained, they were put back in mainstream for those type of classes. But least restrictive environment has traditionally meant as you went up the ladder, like can a, can a student just be in resource? Is that the least restrictive? And if it is, okay, we maintain them at resource. Or is the least restrictive environment self-contained? Okay, then we maintain them there. But what we wanted to do, what we were saying is, yes, you qualify for a self-contained placement, and that's the placement you need. But can least restrictive mean that you go back to gen ed for content area instruction with support. And so it's really completely looking differently at least restrictive environment rather than traditional thoughts. And uh, we really have um, taken that information um, through this process and really tried to apply that to ongoing training efforts. That feedback loop is really helpful to uh, get the perception of as you mentioned, sort of a ladder or that you must go through various steps of a continuum in order to really focus on the individual needs of each student to get them in their least restrictive environments. And again, that just reiterates that special ed is a service, not a place. Absolutely. That was helpful. That was, it was really, it was really good for us to start allowing our thoughts to go to other places than just what we have been um, put in the past with traditional. So, yeah. And you and guys one of the, one of the areas that through this problem that we realized, so we're at the state level at the Department of Ed and you're at the building level with Spradling Elementary. And one of the um, ways that we uh, use this process to reveal maybe some gaps or, or some additional stakeholders who needed to be involved, uh, we realized quickly that um, you had some district level uh, barriers at, at play that you uh, and I at the state level started to work through. Can you elaborate on that at all, Ms. Dawson? Yes, that was really part of our learning curve with this sprint. It was something that just it, the sprint really brought out to us is that we realized that while our building had gone through a very intensive three years of training in the PLC process and about how to help kids academically um, get them where they need to be in a system of intervention, a strong system. And special ed has to be a part of that. While we were doing all this great deep learning at the building, we realized that at our central office level, we had needed to bring them along in our learning. And so we, while we were doing all of that, they were still in central office with their, uh, their, their amount of knowledge about how SPED should be working. And Fort Smith is like any other um, district level office in the state. You know, we want to be safe. We want to stay out of trouble and uh, we want to be very compliant. We want to be definitely within the realm of the law. And so the way that happens a lot of times is you just stay with what's comfortable. Well, 
they had not been through the training and didn't realize that there were new ways you could do things. You could put students in back in gen ed with certain modifications. And so um, that was very scary for them. And so the learning sprint allowed them to come in with us and start began that process of learning that information about what was allowed and what wasn't allowed. But it certainly highlighted to us that from now on, we need to bring them along because clarity precedes competence. And so we have to make sure that everyone's on the bus and everyone is clear about what our goal is. And including, you know, we had the state level involved with you. We had this um, wonderful West Ed team. We had then some central office administrators that weren't in special ed. And then we had the special ed um, office itself, that administrator and the building level. So what a great way to start those conversations. And honestly, Jeff, it doesn't work if you don't have all of that together. That's so true, Robin. Thanks for that explanation. And thank you to you both. And um, but you heard this through both Jeff and Robin just sort of raising this up. It was absolutely a problem that they cared about. It was something that hit on their priorities at all levels of the system, right? And it was something that was a barrier. There was identification of a real or perceived barrier that was happening that was not allowing for improvement to happen. Um, not to happen or not to happen as, as quickly as it needed to happen. It was within the control and the different levels of the system, right? Having different ownerships of, of aspects of that. Something that regularly occurred, right level of specificity, and didn't know quite how to solve yet, but having everyone together in the room led it right into that conversation. So thank you, Jeff and Robin, for just diving in and talking us through those pieces, because I'm now gonna go to this, the idea around commitment to improvement. And talking about and extending what we've just heard about the identification of the problem, this sort of initial work, recognition again of having everyone in the room of different ownership pieces of the issue around LRE. Can you talk to us a little bit about the lessons that you learned from this experience? And when I say lessons, I think maybe even something a little personal, which I know, um, Robin, I think you alluded to a little bit about bringing the team in. And I think we've heard too, Jeff, from your site as well, like, it was great to, to pull in and see what was happening in terms of policy from the state and actualized and where, again, um, it was having an impact um, at the different levels of the system. But other things that you may have learned from this experience that you would like to raise up for the audience that's with us today. Well, Jana, I would highlight, as you mentioned, uh, the great need to include those who um, in the system you may not uh, on the front end recognize that need to be there, but really looking at, um, at the state level, we brought in monitoring and program effectiveness unit, curriculum and assessment unit, and bringing in those extra stakeholders really did help inform the process and really get to a deeper level with the potential causes of um, our issues with least restrictive environment. So that, that's a huge one. Another personal takeaway was um, we do enter these conversations with our personal bias around what we think the problem already is. This process was really helpful for me and challenging at the same time to step back from that and um, not necessarily assume that I knew all of the reasons for why the problem was occurring, but to listen and in doing that, um, I realized that my bias only informed part of the process. It really didn't paint the full picture. And so that was another really helpful takeaway at the state level. Well, of course, I want to highlight that my special ed students made such gains academically, which isn't that what we're all about? Isn't it really, when it comes down to it, when you put um, the funnel down and you come down to the very end of that is, the question is, is that what's best for kids? 
And we were able to, while working through this problem and it got messy sometimes, we were able to say with a resounding yes, yes, this is what's best for kids. And yes, we do believe that all kids can learn at high levels. We definitely absorb that and, and, and we use it with every orifice of our being. As you see these pictures that are going through, these are my students at Spradling. These are some, some self-contained special ed students and some gen ed students. Um, and you'll see, this is a picture right here of my resource teacher. She doesn't pull kids out anymore. She pushes into the classroom. So these kids are getting tier three um, intervention without ever leaving the classroom and they're getting it on their grade level. So my self-contained students, for the first time, I've been a principal there 10 years and for the very first time in 10 years, I had some self-contained students be proficient on the ACT interim Aspire assessments that we were having. These students had never experienced proficiency before. Their parents had never experienced that. And so when we would talk to parents or put surveys out, the kids would come back with how much that they love this experience. Discipline went down for these students. Um, they were around their peers. They felt more, um, you know, normal, as you would say. They felt like a traditional student. They didn't feel ostracized. And so the feedback was all positive. And so I feel like my building is, has been traditionally a, a pre-K through sixth grade. And we would send these students out that are in self-contained, that self-contained room of fourth, fifth and sixth grade students. For the first time, I feel secure that I'm sending these students out more prepared for their future. Also, I want you to know we've been able to, through this process, to um, dismiss four students from special ed. That hasn't happened in all the years of my administration. Also, we've only brought two students into special ed over the last three years. So we think this method works. We're very excited about it. Our parents are excited about it. And uh, I don't mind kind of joking with Jeff. I'm trying to put him out of a job because I'm trying to just special ed. I'm trying to get them completely gone because I do think there it isn't really special education. It's not, it's not to be contained. We need to let these kids out. Even the name self-contained, put them somewhere and put them away. We need to look at it differently. These kids can learn. They can learn at high levels. They just may need a little, a little longer and they may need a little more support. But hey, who doesn't? Who doesn't need that? And the results are there. The data doesn't lie. Thank you. Thank you both. I think there are, um, you know, key takeaways there from what you both highlighted as your personal learnings and takeaways from this experience. And then sort of looking out. So now reflecting on the whole piece and right. And I, I know we heard a little bit about sort of the good, the bad, the ugly as going through here, but is there advice you would have um, for other SEAs, and maybe Jeff, I'll throw that one to you, and maybe Robin to the LEAs and down to the schools too, um, that, would that you would have for them as they're looking to engage in intentional continuous improvement together. Because um, I can say from the outset, um, having this opportunity and, and constructing it um, to intentionally bring SEAs and LEAs together in the same learning space was really powerful as being sort of an outside observer, sort of a, you know, a thought partner and pulling that through. And I, and I will say that extends to Matt and we mentioned Corey Donahue a little bit earlier with the improvement science team of being part of this conversation. And it really meant a ton to watch and see how the different levels of the system all related to each other. And that having that space to sort of focus on a problem together indeed really did move some pieces. And so um, it was great to be 
to get to be involved with you both in this. And I'd love to hear what advice you may have for other SEAs or LEAs who may be looking to engage in some sort of inten intentional continuous improvement together. Absolutely, yeah, Jan, I'll be glad to share. Um, I would say that so often at the SEA level, our work is, is broad, it's big, it seems unending, sometimes it feels ambiguous, um, and, and it really feels at times like a marathon. And while um, that work with the long range vision and planning is valuable and marathons are amazing, you really also need some short-term ways to investigate your system. You need short-term ways to engage stakeholders and you need short-term ways by which you can have successes. You can investigate a problem. You can um, look at some continuous improvement strategies and you can implement those and really see about the value uh, of those. And that's exactly what the learning sprint process has done in this situation with Spradling Elementary. Um, and, and I think that's the advice that I would have. Um, yes, really marathons are important, but the sprint process in a shorter term um, improvement cycle, that's actually very valuable and um, it's meaningful. You, you see sort of the more um, initial benefits of our work and um, engaging throughout that system is, is just very rewarding. It's not always easy, but it's always rewarding. Um, my advice would be don't take the traditional thoughts about your state department um, as for what you think that they will um, allow or not allow. Get with them be personable with them because a lot of times you will find that they care as much about your kids as you do and they're willing to come together to work with you to engage for something great for kids. Wow. I uh, yeah. I uh, thank you both and I I think that's absolutely true and you two are both um absolute ambassadors um, for this interaction piece on all levels of the system. And as I said, as a lead up to this question, it has been um, a great pleasure um, just being involved. And you both have wonderful colleagues, team members um, across the board and the commitment to schools and students um, was just absolutely seen um, through your work, um, not only within the Sprint, but carrying it on beyond. So thank you both so much. I get the pleasure just to, to quickly close us out. And again, um, I just wanna say to Robin and Spradling Elementary, thank you so much for, for providing these pictures because this really does just bring it back home too as um, the focus of the sprints, right? Of what all of this work through different levels of systems was aimed at and aimed for and aimed to, right? For the benefit of the kiddos in these pictures. So we just wanted to provide a moment's pause here. You've heard a lot. You've heard um, the Arkansas story. Um, please, you know, take a second to reflect on your own system. In what ways could your SEA think about engaging in continuous improvement at the SEA level and with LEAs? And what have you heard in this presentation that you have questions about? What have you heard that affirms your thinking and what surprises you? And what do you think might be a best next step for your team? Just taking a second here to pause and sort of do that self-reflection on these different levels. And, and again, maybe even going back to different parts of the journey that Arkansas laid out and saying, yeah, that really resonates. Or I, that's again a place, I just wanna know exactly how that worked. We are all happy to engage in those conversations with you um, to benefit your team, your schools, your systems, wherever we possibly can. Um, sometimes, as Jeff said, you know, sprints are worth it, um, and especially in furtherance of that long improvement journey, which are the marathons, but having good partners along the way, especially those um, who are charged with the touch points with students directly on a daily basis, having those folks as partners, as thought partners, as experts, right, bringing into the system is critical for us all to move improvement. So again, right, the key takeaways are what can you bring forward? 
this is the piece too that we want to re-highlight, right? As a central law of improvement, as every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets, right? This is another piece as a, as a possibly a next best step for you, right? You cannot improve a process if you don't understand it. Um, from W. Edward Stemming, right? So you have to start by seeing what it is. And a piece of that too is engaging with folks at all levels of the system. So no matter where you sit, right? You need to talk to the folks that are impacted by the system. And that includes too, talking to families and students, right? Um, when um, Robin alluded to earlier that the engagement wasn't limited just to the school team, right? It extended beyond it's to talking to students and parents about their experiences with special education within Spradling Elementary. And that makes a key difference because those are the folks too that experience it. And to be able to understand a process, you've got to be able to see the whole pieces. And so for that to have happened and occur, occurred at Spradling and getting those interviews and those thinking, it also gave a wider view to the state system who was doing their own empathy interviews there too, right? Talking to other folks who were impacted. But again, sort of a central tenet here, you cannot improve a process if you don't understand it. And being able to see the system and having stakeholders at different levels of a system, a different entry points into a process is key for improvement. So we just wanna extend a big thank you to you all for being with us today. And again, um, myself as a facilitator with the National Center for Systemic Improvement at Westhead, I say thank you on behalf of myself and my colleague, Matt Navo. And then extending the greatest thanks to um, Jeff and Robin who have joined us today um, and really did the work, right? And really um, moved forward the system um, the, from, their, from their respective positions, right? To benefit students in Arkansas. And that is a really, um, yeah, I just want to say thank you both again. Um, and thank you for all the work you do on behalf of students in Arkansas and on behalf of right, you sharing your story to everyone who is tuning in today. Jeff or Robin, anything to close us out before we say thank you? No, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jana and Matt. Appreciate it. Love working with you. Thank you. And thanks for the audience being here with us. Yes, thank you all. And thanks for this great opportunity. All right, and thank you, and we will send you all on your way. We look to see you at our breakout session. Thank you.